fifth dimension, beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. Picture of a woman looking at a picture. Movie great of another time. Once brilliant star in a firmament no longer a part of the sky. Eclipsed by the movement of earth and time. Barbara Jean Trenton, whose world is a projection room, whose dreams are made out of celluloid. Barbara Jean Trenton, struck down by hit and run years and lying on the unhappy pavement, trying desperately to get the license number of fleeting fame. Miss Trenton. Miss Trenton. That was it, Sally. <gasps> oh, I brought you. I brought you a snack, Miss Trenton. Thank you. Just put it down there. Yes, ma'am. Sally. Hello. Is Miss Trenton in? Yes, sir. In there for a change? Yes, sir. Mr. Wise, I'm very worried about her. I'm worried about her. I'll talk to her. You don't understand, Mr. Wise. It's getting much worse. Well, she's been in there too much. I, I think it's beginning to disturb you, too. Let's see what I can do. Fix yourself a drink. It's 11 in the morning. So it's 11 in the morning. So it's 11 in the morning, and the sun is out. That's a beautiful day in Beverly Hills. There's no smog. It's 84 degrees, and it is lovely. What would I do without your daily weather reports? Question is, Barbara, what do you do with them? You sit here in this... Air-conditioned cave showing one picture after another. Let's skip it. Bobby, it's no good, honey. None of this is any good. Look, if you won't fix yourself a drink, sit down and be quiet, will you? 
You know something, Daniel? You have a habit of looking poised, ready to spring. What was the picture? Two of them. A farewell without tears. Co-starring Jerry Herndon. Not co-starring, darling. He was my leading man. 1933. And a night in Paris. 1934. I know it was 1934. What are you now, Daniel? Father time? Bobby. Look, I failed to mention this before. I hate clinical tiptoeing. You don't like what I do, don't knock what I do. Bobby, I have to knock what you do, and I have to get clinical when I see you bottle yourself in this room and stop the clock. You put it back 15, 20, 25 years. You do this every day. Now, honey, that's sick. That is really sick. Is that all? No, it isn't. I've set up an appointment for you today over at International. At International? Yes. Hot, Danny? Sounds like a good one, too. Well, oh, darling. You know something? I never did get along with Marty Saul when I was under contract there. Well, he's much older now. I think you'll find that he's mellow. Oh, you know, he said I was the most difficult star he'd ever worked with. Danny, you're a nice guy and a loyal friend. And in my selfish, devious way, I'm very much in love with you. Oh, Danny, I hope it's a musical. Oh, I'd love to dance again. <laughs> or a love story. Oh, I'd give anything to play love scenes like I saw this morning. Scenes with Jerry Herndon. You know, we did three pictures together. I have a memory of you for my eyes, thoughts of you for my mind, and the touch of you for all of me. Oh, something like that. And then we did a night in Paris together. Barbara, you were much younger then. Go to the devil, huh? Barbara. Honey, this is 1959. It's 25 years from night in Paris, and 26 years since you made Farewell Without Tears. That room across the hall is dark, it's damp, it's full of cobwebs. Step out of it, step out of this kick. You get your war paint on, and I'll meet you over at Saul's office at 3 o'clock, okay? Okay, Danny. <laughs> Send them in. Nice to see you again, Barbara. Hello, Marty. It's been a long time. Yes. Sit down. Uh, you know Danny, of course. Yes. He's uh, told you about the part? Well, uh, not exactly. I think it fits you. It's not a big part, but uh, I think it'll be a nice showcase for you. Not big, but a nice showcase. Oh, come on, be more specific. You of all people, Marty, should know what I demand in the part. Why is it we always seem to fight, Barbara? Doesn't that always seem to be the case? We begin by fighting. I'm still waiting to hear about the part. Raise the veil. You play a mother. How old a mother? Forty-ish, mm, but uh, very vibrant, very much alive. As opposed to what? A corpse? I don't play mothers, Mr. Saul. I never have, and I won't start now. I also don't take bit roles. And you should know that. Come on, Danny, let's go. I'm sorry, Barbara. I didn't know you were still so particular. Well, now you do. At least I would think you'd look at the part. 
It'd be a sheer waste of my time. Barbara, maybe we should get the script, look at it, see what it's all about. You look at it and see what it's all about, and you play the part. I never did like this tasteless, crude man when I was under contract here. And I don't like him anymore now, when he offers me fast bit parts. All right, Miss, Miss Prima Donna. You I got news for. You may think you are still the number one lady on the top of the heap, but you got it wrong. You're just an aging broad with a scrapbook. Look, Marty. And any part you get at this studio won't have to go through an agent. We can set it up through the community chest because it'll be charity. Remind me someday, when you've gone over the hill and you're down on your hands and knees, remind me to give you a swift kick in the teeth so that you know exactly how it feels. You shouldn't pay any attention to him. You talking about Marty Saul? Yes. He doesn't exist. That studio doesn't exist. Not anymore. Not the way it is now. This is the world, Dan, right in here. From now on, I keep the drapes drawn and doors locked. I don't want any of the outside world coming in. Not the Marty Souls or the movies without sentiment. Actors in undershirts, rock and roll, jukeboxes. Not any of it. Barbara, whether you like it or not, that's the way things are. That's the way it is. What do you do, Barbara? Shut your eyes, say it doesn't exist because you can't see it? It doesn't have to exist if I shut my eyes. If I shut my eyes, it all disappears. If I wish hard enough, I can wish it all away. As of this moment, right now, Danny, these are the 1930s again, with all the charm and romance, all the gaiety. That was a carefree world, Danny, and I'm going to make it that way again. Can't. It's nostalgic, it's nice, but it's not true. It's phony. It doesn't have to be phony. If I wish hard enough, it doesn't have to be phony. Darling, we'll give a party. We'll invite all my friends. You tell them I'm still here, or what it's like here. Tell Jerry Herndon, Steve Black, Paul Nader. Tell them, Danny. Barbara, this is ridiculous. Have you forgotten? Paul Nader's been dead for five years. Jerry Herndon lives in Chicago. Steve Black hasn't been around for 15 years. And if I could get them, what kind of a party do you think I can invite them here? Don't you understand what you're doing? You've built yourself a graveyard here. You keep wishing for things that are dead. Sally, is she all right? I 
wish I could tell you, Mr. Weiss. But I don't see her anymore. Sometimes her bed's not even slept in. She just stays in that room all the time, day and night. And a couple of times when I've gone in there, I tell you, Mr. Weiss, I don't want you to think I've gone out of my mind or something, but I swear to you, I see her up on that screen. Now, Sally, don't, please. Don't, don't upset yourself. There'll be a gentleman by in a little while, a Mr. Herndon. Jerry Herndon? That's right. Who, who played opposite Miss Trenton? That's right. He's in town on a business trip, and I thought it might be oh. good for her to see him. Now, you take him into the study when he comes, all right? Barbara, it's me, Danny. Can I come in, please? Danny, please go away. Oh, Barbara, please. I've got something important to tell you. What's the matter? Don't like the merchandise? Oh, the merchandise is beautiful, but... Looks a little tired. Looks like it hasn't slept in a couple of weeks. And it looks like it could use some fresh air and sun. It's quite happy. Thank you for the weather report. And the doors are saying when you came in. A friend's coming to see you today. Friend? Oh, I thought all my friends were dead, retired, or forgotten. You told me that yourself. Ah, but this one's an old friend. He's in town and he'd love to see you. I tell him I'm not receiving this year. Jerry Herndon, Barbara. Jerry? Jerry? Where is he? Well, he's in town on business. I happened to meet him at the hotel. He asked about you, asked if he could come to see you, and I took the liberty. Oh, I must look awful. Oh, darling, when he gets here, take him into the study. I, I, I've got to do my face. Change. He'd love you if you came down in sackcloth. But go ahead. I, I'll hurry. It's been a long time, Barbara Jean. A lot of water over the dam. Yes. <laughs> Isn't it odd we always picture people the way they were? Never as they really are. <laughs> Funny. I thought you'd be in here in an officer's uniform. <laughs> or white tie, tails, with a champagne glass. That's how I thought you'd be. That was 20 years ago. I even had some crazy idea that we'd do another picture together again. No, Barbie, I gave that up long ago. That went down the drain with my youth. You don't act anymore? What do you do? <laughs> I run a string of supermarkets outside of Chicago. String of supermarkets? Mm -hmm. Outside of Chicago. That's nice. He's the one I expected. He's the one I wanted to have come and see me. But he's dead now. Dead like all the others. Barbie. Barbie, please. Go away, both of you. Please go away. Go away. <laughs> Goodbye, Barbara Jean. Goodbye, my dear.
There you are, Jerry. There you are. You look so young. So wonderfully young. There was a strange old man here a while ago who said he was you. Jerry, I wish I could be there with you. I wish I could be up there with you. I wish. some coffee? Who shut it off? I, I did. An hour ago. And then I called you. Have you looked in her room? That's the first place I checked. Then I went to every room in the house. She's not here. She's not here. At least not in the way that she's not here the way you and I are. You're gonna run it, Mr. Weiss? Yes, Sally. I'm gonna run it. It's me, Danny.
some wishes, Bobby, to the ones that come true, to the wishes that come true, to the strange mystic strength of the human animal who can take a wishful dream and give it a dimension of its own, to Barbara Jean Trenton, movie queen of another era, who has changed the blank tomb of an empty projection screen into a private world. It can happen in the Twilight Zone.